Hello and welcome to the Find Your Feminine Fire podcast. I am your host, Amanda Testa. I am a sex, love, and relationship coach. And in this podcast, my guests and I talk sex, love, and relationships and everything that lights you up from the inside out. Welcome. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Find Your Feminine Fire podcast. I am your host, Amanda Testa, and today I am thrilled to be talking with the beautiful Susan Bratton. She is just a champion of sex education. She's been a sex expert for over 20 years plus, as well as a a million accolades. She's called the Dear Abby of Sex, as well as she's just one of the most sweet and generous humans that I know. And I'm so grateful to be talking with you today. And we're going to be diving into all kinds of good stuff around libido and desire and arousal and what the difference in all those is and really how to supercharge our sex life. So welcome, Susan. Thank you for being here. Oh, your introduction gave me little goosebumps, Amanda. (laughs) That's so sweet. Yeah, I was thinking about how much I love, this is the second time we've been together on the show. So thank you for having me back, number one. And number two, I just love the name of your show, Finding Your Feminine Fire. I mean, it's really a big part of my entire life's work is helping women find and expand their desire and their sexual pleasure and helping men understand how to help women do that. Yes. <laughs> because we do need, we need a little help sometimes. <laughs> we do. And we have never been taught these things. And so I love that you have so many amazing, you know, techniques and resources as, as well as your personal life media company. And so you just are a plethora of answers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was funny. What, one of the reasons that we're together today is because we're talking about an event that I have coming up, my Sexual Vitality Summit. And in thinking about libido, desire, and arousal, the subject of this particular conversation we're having today, I had been doing a lot of thinking about the physical, the physicality of our sexuality. Because one of the things that I realized, I started out teaching bedroom communication skills and passionate lovemaking techniques. First, I started out with orgasm skills, the basics of how do you have orgasms? What kind of orgasms are there? You know, by my count right now, there are 14 kinds of male orgasms and 16 kinds of female orgasms. And within that, one of them is called wild card, which means that there are many ways that people are having orgasms that I don't even know about. So I'm always telling people, write to me if this isn't what isn't on the, you know, if you're doing something that's not on my list of ways to have orgasms, I want to know. Because we're, such, yes. we're so massively orgasmic, both men and women. And yet we don't have the map of the territory to know what our orgasmic potential is. So I've been teaching how do you move from sex to making love? How do you move from friction to passion? And I learned all about that. <clears throat> and then, how do you talk about your needs in the bedroom? What are the communication skills that get you on what I like to call the upward pleasure spiral? And I started laying out all that information to the universe. And then I realized, oh, here's the third leg of the stool that's holding people back from having. Like the, all the orgasm techniques and bedroom communication work, skills in the world don't work if you have painful sex or erectile dysfunction, or you're, mm-hmm. you get a UTI every friggin' time you make love, you know, or whatever it is. Your libido is flatlined from taking the pill, or God knows there's a million things. You're so afraid to get STIs, or you have herpes and you don't want to date because you think you might give it to somebody, or I mean, the list just goes on and on and on about the number of things that can go wrong with our equipment. And we women have very delicate urogenital systems. They're, they're fragile. We're fragile little beings. We've got to watch our microbiomes and things like that. Did you know there's a breast microbiome as well as a vaginal microbiome? I did not know that. I didn't either. This is what my free gift is. The 38 fascinating facts that supercharge your sex drive is essentially these really interesting things that I learned from doing my summit, my sexual vitality summit. I essentially assembled my dream team of doctors, functional doctors. This is like non-pharma stuff. This is natural healing. This is like grandmother's recipes. This is why you shouldn't take an antibiotic if you have a UTI. You should use d manos You know, there's d manos What's that? It's a kind of glucose that your body doesn't take in as sugar. And it actually, weirdly, This is just like one weird little nerdy sex fact. Most of 
UTIs, urinary tract infections, come from E. coli. Hmm. Of course, because our vaginas are right near our anuses. And so with sex and friction and moving around, some bugs get in there and give us UTIs. And the E. coli protein has Velcro on the outside that hooks into the mucous membrane in our urinary tract and it holds on and latches on. And D-mannose is a very inert type of kind of a sugary substance that you can take. You can get it in the health food store or on Amazon or what have you. And if you drink that and you pass it through the urinary tract, it has the Velcro sticky stuff that the E. coli would rather attach to. And it actually jumps off your, off your, your urethral canal and onto the sugars and you pee it out. And it's like, okay, that's interesting. So if you look at all the clinical trials of UTIs, antibiotics versus this D-mannose, D-mannose just kicks butt on antibiotics. And then it doesn't blow up your gut system and kill all the other bacteria that's in your vagina and give you yeast infections and, you know, dysbiosis and all the stuff that it does. It was just like nerdy little stuff like that makes me so happy. <laughs> I love the sex nerd effects because it is, it's fascinating. And, you know, I think sometimes we don't realize how we are so connected. Like we are holistic beings. We have to look at all the parts of us. If there's an issue with our sexuality, usually it's because something else is going on somewhere. Yes. Well, and that I'd say biggest takeaway of the entire event was how important gut microbiome is to our libido. So if we're talking about libido, desire, and arousal, starting with libido, which is your natural desire, what, what make you kind of like your horniness, your physical horniness, your wanting of sex. If you're, if you're not wanting sex and there's nothing wrong with your relationship with your partner, it's likely starting in your gut. It's not your hormones necessarily, it could be that your hormones are suppressed because your gut microbiome is off. So you're not producing the level of hormones you should. You've got too much stress. You've got high cortisol. You know, it's all, all of those things are dampening down your hormones, but they're also dampening down your desire, your, your desire for sex because you literally don't feel well enough for sex. That was the thing that I got out of this is that we live in an estrogenation where we're getting toxins from the water bottles and the Tupperware and the plastic wrap and the food containers and all the packaging of our stuff in our grocery store. We're getting herbicides and glyphosates in the foods that we eat, which are antibiotics. We're getting toxins from the health and beauty products, our, our laundry detergents, our bath soaps, our makeup, our shampoos, our dishwashing liquids and detergents. We're taking in off-gassing from the rugs and you know, all of the things in our environment. Our sex toys, if, they're, if they smell at all and they have squishy plastics, they have phthalates in them, which are highly toxic endocrine disruptors. We're breathing in stinky air. We're drinking water with stuff, you know, with bad stuff in it. We, ha- we eat sushi and get mercury. We've got cadmium and lead from the air. I mean, it's surrounding us. And what happens is if our gut microbiome is off from all of the antibiotics we've either been given by our doctors and taken in from the foods that we eat, We've killed off most of the flora and fauna. And then if we're not literally waking up and having a poo slide out of our butt, if we're a poopanata instead of a poopalata, if it's not (laughs) easy for us, then, and gluten gums our system up, you know, so we've got all these things going on that are essentially clogging our alimentary system and not allowing us to absorb the vitamins from the food and make our hormones and produce our neurotransmitters like serotonin, we're also not getting the toxins out of our system. We're not, if we're not sweating, if we're not skin brushing, if we're not pooping and peeing a lot to move things through, we're tamping down our libido. And I just did not understand 
the impact that that had until I interviewed all these experts and every single one of them was talking, every doctor was talking about the gut biome and detoxification. And I was like, whoa, man. All right. So I went on this. Oh, I went on this like gut reset program, this 90 day gut reset program. I'm taking a transient antibiotic instead of a colonizing antibiotic at night that actually goes through and digests all of the viruses and the bacteria and stuff that I wasn't moving through. And then I also found out about this incredible kind of like skincare concept of eating this particular yogurt called L. ruteri, Lactobilis ruteri. You make your own yogurt at home. It's a, a yogurt that essentially it creates a good scaffolding for collagen to kind of keep your skin plumped up. And you take exogenous collagen, like collagen powder, like a really nice organic collagen powder, and you eat this yogurt, maybe throw them both in your smoothie, and it plumps your skin back up, which means it plumps up your vaginal mucosa too. Right. Because as we age, our tissue thins, we dry out, we have more difficulty with lubrication. So I got all these like grandma, cool, really cool like grandma concepts from natural, holistic kinds of ways to keep your body working sexually mm -hmm. so that you have more libido, life force, creativity, passion, you know, feeling good enough for sex, feeling horny again, because we're really at a disadvantage at a hormonal level with regard to sex. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, there's some unfair stuff about the masculine feminine scenario where guys are like perpetually horny if they're healthy. They're just like, they wake up every morning horny, as you know, because you see your husband's heart on in the morning, if you're lucky and he's in good health, right? And for us, we don't, we don't naturally run around being horny dogs all the time. And so we really need to cultivate that to keep that connection and the happiness with our partner and that intimacy. Mm -hmm. And as we age, our vulvas, the vaginal mucosa, as it begins to dry out, like we basically desiccate, we wrinkle up, we shrivel up as we age. That's happening to our yoni. And if we don't keep it full of healthy fats, and I mean like I take a tablespoonful of cod liver oil and I take some seed oil and I take 800 units of vitamin E mixed to cofferols every morning with a lipase enzyme and some box ox bile salts because I lost my gallbladder because I took birth control pills when I was young and I didn't know, we didn't know, Jolene Brighton didn't exist at the time to tell us that birth control pills were bad. Birth control pills give you calcium stones in your gallbladder that you can't get rid of and you lose your gallbladder. And then man, acceleration of wrinkles really starts. Mm -hmm. So you got to keep yourself really full of healthy fats. Like a half an avocado a day is not enough healthy fat. Some nuts is not enough healthy fat. I'm literally pumping my system with fat right now and seeing that my skin is rejuvenating. And I know that if the external skin is rejuvenating, the internal skin is rejuvenating yeah. because we get dried out. So then we get vaginal laxity, which means giant vagina. And that's the last thing we want because here's what's happening to our guys at the same time. Their penis is shrinking with age they're getting age-related atrophy. And so their penis is getting smaller and our vagina is getting bigger. This does not help with the grip that we need to have orgasms from penetration. This makes it harder for us to have orgasms from penetration. So then we want less and less penetration. So we got to keep all that stuff plumped up. Right, right. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? And I love all these protocols. Did you learn a lot of these from the experts in your summit? Yes, I did. Yeah. I'm excited it's to check that out. There. I cannot wait. I know. It's like very much like grandma, homeopathy, natural healing, kind of like, we did a whole segment with Dr. Keith Scott Mumby on herpes. Because I have had herpes. I got oral herpes from my mom when I was just a child. And I've had fever blisters my whole life. And then when I was 20, my second boyfriend I lost my virginity when I was 19. At 20, my second boyfriend cheated on me with another girl and then gave me herpes. So I've had genital herpes for 30 years now almost. And 
they have really plagued me. And herpes is a virus that lives in the ganglion nerve bundle and the trigeminal nerve bundle. So the HSV1 lives in the trigeminal nerve and the HSV2 lives in the, in the ganglion nerve near your sacroiliac. And I think we're going to come to find out in our lifetime that herpes viruses create a lot of problems for people from trigeminal neuralgia, which they call the suicide disease hmm. because it is so painful. People kill themselves. Hmm. People get hooked on opiate, opioids from it. I think all the lower, a lot of lower back problems and sacral issues come from it. They're linking it to Alzheimer's and dementia now. Hmm. I think we don't understand the full flavor of these herpes viruses that everybody, three quarters of the population has herpes and the quarter that doesn't, doesn't want to frigging get it. So how do you manage your herpes in a natural way so that you don't have to be taking a cyclovir, a pharmaceutical constantly? I don't know about you, but that thing makes my stomach sick. It makes me exhausted when I take it. So I wanted natural solutions. And Dr. Mumby came up with a whole series of protocols that and I read every book on herpes on Amazon. I looked at every program that was out there to get rid of herpes. And I thought none of them are using some of these new concepts for uncovering the biofilm and then tamping down the viral replication with natural ingredients. Can you get rid of herpes with these things? No, but can you m render them almost gone out of your life? For many people, I think yes. So that's one of the segments. I mean, avoiding STIs and having the safe sex talk. There's so much to sex also. Yeah. I'm totally in love right now with what I would call genital restoration. Mm -hmm. Because a big part of not feeling like you want to have sex is that a lot of women have lack, loss of sensation, loss of yeah. orgasmic sensation. And a lot of men lose sensitivity. I mean, women write to me a lot and they say, my husband pounds away at me for an hour just to try to ejaculate. I can't stand it anymore. What can I do about this? He can't come. And I'm like, I can't even imagine. I'd be like taking my foot and like, get off me. I, I just <laughs> couldn't put my, I would not be putting, I would be like, you're on your own, babe. I give you four, eight minutes. I better have lots of orgasms the whole time. And if you don't come, God love you. You've got to go off and figure it out yourself. <laughs> That's mostly because I don't have any sex I don't want to have. See, that's, and that's so what I always tell women. Don't have any sex you don't want to have. Only have the sex you want because your yoni will get a grudge on her. She'll yes. get like, you know, eh, and like it. It was good. And then you're not going to want sex again. So you have to be very honest with your partner if it's not working for you. But vaginal restoration is very interesting new RF devices and CO2 lasers that go up inside and do subcutaneous damage to your vulval tissue. You can have a vulva lift. You can actually have the labia, RF devices on the labia, the outer and inner labia that plump the collagen back up so that your, your lips look nice and full again. Because as you age, they they literally start to hang down like a set of balls. It's an injustice, almost <laughs> unbearable. You know what I mean? Like this getting old stuff is not for the faint of heart, right? <laughs> you look down there and you're like, my vulva's sagging. Oh my God. Well, the, but, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, it's interesting too, because, you know, we think about our face, the same thing's happening with our vulva. And so many women don't even take that into consideration. They might spend, you know, so much on lotions and potions for the face, but you can't forget all of our body, right? Exactly. What's, what's happening here is happening there. Yeah. That's why the internal stuff, the cod liver oil and things like that, or the micro damage from the lasers and the RF devices that recollagenate the area, the micro damage that you do that rebuilds that tissue and gives you your grip back and your vagina tightens and tones, reverses incontinence and gets more sensation back is so amazing. Like the, uh, the O shot. Have you had an O shot yet? The orgasm shot? No. Oh, mama, you got to get an O shot. These are good. Now, how old are you, Amanda? I'm 46. Oh, yeah. You got to get an O shot by 2020. This, put this on your bucket list. It is so <laughs> good. You know what they are? 
Yes, I know what they are. I, I actually have felt like I haven't needed one, but I am open to always oh, well, expanding what's good. You don't even know how much sensation you've lost. Mm-hmm. When you get a notion, and I've had three of them, it actually took me three to really get my clitoral and what it's called the G spot, which is actually called the urethral sponge, mm-hmm. get my clitoris and G area rejuvenated from the loss of aging, the loss of tissue and sensation. You know how the clitoral structure is a spongy structure. It's like erectile tissue. Yeah. It isn't like it. It is it. Yeah. It's erectile tissue. So is the G area, which is the, the spongy tube that goes all the way along your urethral canal. And then there's a perineal sponge underneath the bottom of your vaginal canal between your rectum and your vaginal canal. That's also erectile tissue. Those structures dry out as we age. So you have a degradation of sensation as you age. And the O-shot or orgasm shot is PRP, platelet-rich plasma, taken from your own blood, spun in a centrifuge. You know all about this, Amanda, because of Mark working in with Regenex, which is Mm -hmm. a big PRP and stem cell organization. And I went to Regenex, by the way, and they did a great job on my thumb joint. So I'm big on PRP. So I use, I'm like, PRP, stick that in everything. Mm -hmm. I want to get a vampire facelift this year. I want to get the vampire hair restoration. (laughs) I love the PRP. So the PRP injected into your clitoral structure and your uh, urethral structure, your G spot or G area, that kind of brings all the growth factors from your blood. Call, cytokines are like dog whistles that call to your body to release stem cells and they come in and they rejuvenate the tissue in that area and they plump it back up. The sensi- I'll tell you something. After my O shots, my orgasms were like, I was 35 at 50, 55. I had them done a couple of years ago. It rolled back the clock 20 years on my sensation. I did not realize how much sensation I had lost. And because sex keeps getting better your whole life and you become more and more orgasmic as you learn about orgasm and you get orgasm skills, if you study sexuality, which everyone who listens to your show, they're into their sex life, right? This is the... Mm-hmm value and benefit you provide is guiding women into their sexual potential. So I don't have to tell you that there are a lot of us women who want to have better and better sex our whole lives. Well, your body ages. And these are simple things that you can do to get that sensation back. Once you have one or two or three of them, it took me three to really get what I consider to be full sensation back. And what's great is they're not in the grand scheme of things, you know, that expensive. They're super easy. It doesn't really hurt to get them. It takes about six months to feel the full effect because it's, a, it's your body mm-hmm. rejuve itself. Right. But if I had one every six months for three times over 18 months, and I felt like, okay, now it's back to where it was. I really hadn't even realized what I'd lost. And what's great is all this is available for men as well, like right. the Gaines wave, shock wave therapy to the penile tissue with the P shot of his blood into his penile chambers and the penis pump, the vacuum erection device to pull that tunica albuginea and stretch it so that the tissue can kind of grow into it to reverse his genital atrophy. So mm-hmm. you're tightening and he's bringing its volume back up and then you're getting a good grip again and sex feels great again. And probably by the time you're 50, it's a really good time to be thinking about these things. Mm-hmm. And I just love all of that. I don't know, amplified regenerative therapies, mm-hmm. sexual regeneration, vaginal and penile restoration. These are some of the words that people are starting to use to talk about these procedures. And they're all available and they're wonderful. And most people don't know about them. They think vaginal rejuvenation is surgery. Like, oh, you're going to cut my labia off or you're going to sew my vagina tight. No, that's plastic yeah. surgery. That's vagioplasty and labiaplasty. Totally different. Right. I'm talking about are essentially treatments you can do on your lunchtime. <laughs> right. And I, I love that there are so many options and that you can do so much to really help your 
libido and all of these things, just your sexual vitality overall. So we'll definitely tune into the summit to find more details on all these lovely protocols. And I'm curious if there's anything else around libido that you feel is important to share. Well, I think so. The bottom line on libido, so we'll do libido, desire, arousal. Libido is your body's functioning. If you're not feeling horny, then look at your general health. How's your gut microbiome? How's your pooping? Are you hydrated? How's your hormone production? Are you producing enough hormones? Or if you're, uh, if you're past your menses and you're not dropping any estrogen anymore out of your ovaries because they've you know, stopped working, are you doing bioidentical hormone replacement? If you want to, super safe now, really good, very helpful. We talk all about that in the summit as well. The difference between endogenous and exogenous hormone production. Endogenous being you make it yourself. How do you do that naturally? exogenous being you add in hormones on top. So that's really the libido piece of it. Then desire is how do you feel about your partner and what is your relationship with yourself? It's kind of the emotional aspect of things. And then when you go back to arousal, that's more, again, understanding your arousal pathways. And that's where I think we should spend some more time mm-hmm. today because yeah. desire is clearing the way of anything that's getting rid of withholds or un, unmet needs, getting your relationship so that you want your partner. That's the management of your desire for your partner. And then fueling it by connecting emotionally and learning new things together and having erotic play dates and stop thinking about it as sex and start thinking about it as fun. (laughs) If it's, if sex isn't fun, you don't want it. You don't desire it. So how do you get back to that new relationship energy? How do you get back to feeling desire again, learning new things in the bedroom together? I want to, wear lingerie or dress up for you as a little Catholic schoolgirl and get a spanking, or I want to uh, learn how to have expanded orgasm dates, or I want, I've I've never ejaculated. I'd like to explore female ejaculation. I'd like to do G-spot awakening. I'd like to learn to give you incredible blowjobs. I'd like to learn how to give myself orgasms from going down on you. I'd like to have sex in this position. I'd like to have sex in this place. You know, the list is endless once you start thinking about Mm -hmm. what might be of interest to you. So always keeping that kind of sexual curiosity together and trying new things. Beginning as beginners together in the bedroom is what keeps that new relationship energy. And desire, one of my mentors, Dr. Deborah Annapol, who has since passed away, she wrote some beautiful books. She wrote probably the seminal work on polyamory, as well as a book called The Seven Laws of Love, The Seven Natural Laws of Love. And she and Dossie Eaton, who um, wrote The Ethical Slut, one of the things they taught me was that desire is an equation, simple one, no math involved, ladies. <laughs> Friggin' hate numbers and math. And so equation, I should probably find a new word for it or formula, but they all sound too sciencey and scary to me, but it's really easy. Don't worry. It's this plus this equals desire. And the first one is novelty, variety, danger, uh, uniqueness, plus safety, trust, surrender equals desire. So the thing is in monogamous relationships, we get bored silly because it's just the safety and the, you know, trust and then that's nothing new. And for guys, like they could do it the same way every friggin' day and be happy for the most part. Not that they don't like to do new things, but penetration feels so good to them that, you know, it's their happy place where for us women, we need a lot more stimulation everywhere else. We'll talk about that in the arousal piece of it. But once you start getting the novelty and the play dates and doing new things with someone that you trust and love, it increases your desire. So that's my, like, basically my shortcut end game to having more desire is do some new stuff in the bedroom. Right. Makes sense, right? Totally. I should send you the seven natural laws of love. I'm going to write down to do that. I want to give you that book. You'll love that book. I think, yeah, I would, I would, I've not read it. So I would love that. Yeah. I'm going to send it. It's so sweet. Love book to my girlfriend, Amanda. (laughs) (laughs) 
I have to make notes though. <laughs> Literally had to just write that down. <laughs> I've had to talk to like 500 people to produce this online event, the yeah. sexual vitality, five, over 500 people. I have been like, I feel like I'm putting on like a concert at Madison Garden, you know, Madison Square Garden. <laughs> it's been an amazing amount of people I've had to inter interface with, but totally worth it. A culmination of years worth of great connections and relationships and getting all the, my dream team to show up and tell me all the great stuff I wanted to know from them. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so I've loved every minute of it, as you can tell, because all this stuff's so interesting, isn't it? Right. It's fascinating. I, I mean, know. I just love learning more. So I could, I'm a geek like that too. I know. We share that in common. I call, you know, I like to say I'm just an information whore. I love to learn. <laughs> I know. I love enough. that about you. I love to listen to your show because you always have on so many interesting people. Mm -hmm. I'm always enjoying it. Yeah. I'm, I try to get 20 miles in a week on my walking. Yeah. And that's when I listen to your show because I love to find, I like to keep finding my feminine fire and everybody knows some wonderful things. So, mm -hmm. so good. So you want to talk about arousal? Yes. Let's dive in. Okay. The best way for me to, I'm just going to, I'm going to say a couple things about it. Um, the first one is that I want you to imagine a bullseye target, like an archery target where you have the rings the, th the rings that get smaller and smaller that go right into the center. That's your bullseye. Mm -hmm. And that the masculine and the feminine have very different approaches to arousal. So the masculine, he's, he wants you to start at the bullseye. He basically wants you to touch his dick right away. Not jump on it necessarily, but let it hit. It's very reassuring for him to have his penis touched immediately. Just that's why he grabs your boobs and grabs your crotch right away because he thinks that's the <laughs> right thing to do because that's what he wants. That is what he wants. But you don't want that. You want start at the outside mm -hmm. and work your way in. That's your arousal ladder as a woman is stroke my hair, kiss my eyelids, touch my neck, kiss my neck. Stroke my arms, stroke my back, stroke my legs, then stroke my butt and my belly, and then touch outside my breast. Don't grab my nipples. Kiss me. Don't stick your tongue right in. Like it's very much of a warming up of, of getting us aroused. And then when we finally have enough of the kind of like, okay, now I'd like you to touch my yoni, it's not stick your finger on my clitoris. It's rub my mons, rub my labia, use oil, stroke it, bring the blood to it, get it aroused, get it engorged, stroke my nipples lightly, kiss me, put your tongue in my mouth, make out with me, give me a hickey, you know, suckle my breasts. And then when I want you to, then go inside a little, touch the clitoral structure. Don't just touch the head, touch the hood, touch the legs, rub my labia, touch the inside of my vagina. Don't just stick your fingers straight in, just ease them in, tease the entrance. That's called the introital sphincter, <laughs> which I love. I, I don't know why saying the words introital sphincter brings me joy. But just like honoring that one little lens, that one little sphincter muscle of ours, instead of just like sliding right past it, let's play with that thing a little bit. She mm. loves to be teased open. She wants to right. be gently stroked. So many people just go right to everything instead of insisting, demanding, educating our partners to have more what I would call in my bullseye touch technique, more outer play instead of just straight for the most, you know, tender spots. And so we need a good amount of manual pleasuring and then oral pleasuring before we ever want a penis inside us. And that is something that I really want to encourage women to put their foot down and teach their partner how you want to be touched, and that every day you want a different type of touch. Because again, he's testosterone dominant. So he's just like full speed ahead, 
touch my dick, touch my dick, touch my dick, touch my dick, touch my dick. That's what he wants. And you want get me in my body slowly. Mm -hmm. And then depending on where I am in my cycle, and this doesn't matter whether you're menopausal, postmenopausal, perimenopausal, not menopausal, anything. We are lunar women. We are cyclical. We're very much more cyclical in our desire patterns than our partners are. And so how do you how do you understand where you are and how do you communicate that to your partner so that he understands what kind of touch you need in the moment? Mm -hmm. That's my whole sexual soulmate pact uh, technique, which you and I have talked about. I think we talked about that on the last show. I think that was the gift I gave on the last show, the sexual soulmate pact, which is honoring your cyclical nature and teaching your partner to understand it has nothing to do with his skill and everything to just do with how you need to be touched in the moment. Right. And once a guy really gets that, you know, it's much easier for lesbian partners. They understand that in a more intuitive way. But if you're uh, heterosexual partners, it's guys need to learn that. They don't know. And once they start to learn that you're just going to tell them what you need, and if they can encourage you to keep telling them, yes, baby, thank you. What else, baby? How's this? Is this better? When he verbally assures you that he wants to know, and that he likes your feedback, that he doesn't look at it as failure, then he really can start to get good in bed with you. And you can start getting your needs met, your arousal ladder needs met in the way that you need them in that lovemaking session. So for arousal, that's very important. I've been thinking about changing the name of that technique to the primal pact, because I really have described it as this is your animal. You have to report in from your animal. You have to tell your partner what your animal body is needing in the moment because she's so cyclical. She's a pussycat one day. She's a lioness the next. Do you like that, the primal pact? I do like that. And I think it's so true because I think a lot of times your partner might say, oh, you like this one time. So I'm going to do it every time. But you might not like it every time. So I love that how it's like really being present in the moment to what your body wants and needs and what feels good. And yeah, I find that the more oh, you and I was going to say, I just find that the more that you can communicate this, I hear this all the time from my clients, is that the partners love to give. Like he loves to give to you. He wants to give you pleasure. That turns him on immensely. Yeah. Too. Yeah. He's biologically wired to give you incredible pleasure. It's, he's driven to do it and he wants to do a good job. Testosterone wants to be respected uh, for doing a great job. That's why they like to fix everything. They want to be respected for doing a great job. That's the testosterone desire. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when he's, when you're done with lovemaking, when you go, you did an amazing job. That's the best you've ever played. You really listened to what I was telling you about my body. And then he's like, ah! his chest puffs up and he's all like, ah! <laughs> I did good. She's going to ask me back again. Yes. <laughs> That's our, that's our dudes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so good. Yeah, I like the primal pact. Good. I'm thinking I'll, I'll redo that. I'm going to write it up again. I keep getting better and better at describing it. And uh, I think I'll change it to the primal pact too. I have a whole sexual soulmate series of techniques, which I love. But I also think there are people who are like, ah, soulmates, that's kind of a, you know, that's kind of like a silly thing, you know, that's too woo-woo for me. So I don't know. I'm always trying to meet people where they are and get, I just want them to have the techniques. Well, you have <laughs> but so I've, many. I think I've given away, I don't know, 36,000 copies of the Sexual Soulmate Pact is la- on last count. So it's, people want it. Yes. And I'll just say for everyone listening, you definitely have to check out all the amazing things that Susan offers because she's just got so many amazing products out there that can support you in this education. It's really amazing. So thank you. Yeah. I love to give away free stuff all the time. It takes a lot for people to trust a sex expert. Sex is such an edgy and shameful thing that what I found is I just give, 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 give. And then someone someday is like, oh yeah, I'd like to learn how to have female ejaculatory orgasms. Oh, Susan Bratton has female liquid orgasm. Maybe I'll buy that. It doesn't matter to me. I want everyone to, I, I, I do fine with my paid programs. So fine that I can just give, give, give. And so it's perfect for me because it satisfies me. I'm, I am so happy in my career. I have just such a great growing audience and people love the techniques and I get so much love and it makes me happy. I get loved for giving my techniques out and that makes me happy. (laughs) And it feeds our family and all the people who work for me, it feeds their family. So it, it's a very good system. It seems to work for everybody. I found my place. Yes. You know? 
<laughs> I love it. Yeah. I think, you know, like you mentioned, it's just that giving. You are such a giving person. I love that about you. Oh, so, so are you. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, and I think that just makes people, I, I just feel like it makes it easy to talk about. Because I think for many, it is, like you mentioned, it's something people have a lot of shame around. There's taboo about. So it's nice to have someone so open and welcoming and inviting to learn from. It's very, you. you know, it's, it's not intimidating at all. So good. I'm glad. A good job of meeting people where they're at. So it's all, and we all need this. We all need this. So you, know, you can always learn. That's what I love to share too, is like maybe you already have an amazing sex life, but it could be even better. There's always a way to learn something new or make something more fun or deepen. So, yeah. Yeah. One of my mentors, Dr. Patty Taylor. Uh, she's the one that taught me how to have an expanded orgasm practice. And Tim and I have had an expanded orgasm practice for 15 years now. I credit it with being the single thing that taught me how to have orgasms from intercourse because I was able to be filled up with orgasmic pleasure in a way that finally I could do what is called cross-training. My friend Sherry Winston, another one of my mentors, she taught me about cross-training where you learn how to have an orgasm this way. And then you, as you're starting to orgasm in that way, you take yourself into this new way and it bridges you into a new way of having orgasms. Because yeah. I didn't have orgasms from penetration until I was 45, I think, um, which almost killed my marriage, right? Because I just didn't want to have intercourse anymore after a decade of essentially being a masturbatory sock. I was like, this is bullshit, <laughs> you know? And that was where instead of getting divorced, we just learned how to have sex, decent sex, where I could have orgasms from intercourse too. And now I love intercourse. And that's the thing. Orgasms are a learned skill. We, a lot of people run around with shame and they, uh, they feel like, oh, you know, I can't have an orgasm or I can only have one from a vibrator or I can't have one from penetration or I can't have one from oral. It's just that you haven't learned how yet. It's just that you need more stimulation of different kinds and different ways and things like that. Everything is learnable. I've taught myself to orgasm 16 different ways. And I keep learning more ways to orgasm, more paths to having orgasms. Mm -hmm. and, and everybody can do that. And that's what Dr. Patty said. She said, don't worry, it never ends. Sex just keeps getting better and you keep getting better at it your whole life. And it was her, her that I partnered with to publish Expand Her Orgasm Tonight, which is the clitoral stroking technique. I really, did I give you that yet? Did I give you I and think Mark I, that? Yes. I'd did. love for you guys to learn that. The next time yeah. the four of us are together, we'll um, show you exactly how to do it too. Like show, put you guys in the doing position. You can do it fully clothed. Yeah. Put you in the doing position, get you down, get you organized so that you understand what you're doing. Explain the three opening strokes, the bed and bread and butter stroke, and the closing stroke. Because having that 15 minutes to a half an hour of expanded orgasm stroking a couple times a week, even once a week, if you can just settle with him and have him give you this manual, clitoral sensation will expand your orgasmic ability. It keeps you very close together. And mm. what I love about the practice is that there's no, it's almost like if you have the agreement that when you do this practice, it does not lead to sex. Right. There's no pressure to have any, to go any further. You can literally say, thank you, baby. That felt great. You can come and come and come. And when you're done, you can get up and give him a kiss and say, thank you. And women are like, that's not fair. Why would you do that to a guy? Because here's the trick. The trick is that once there's no pressure for you to go any further mm -hmm. and you're free to just have more orgasmic pleasure, you actually are more turned on more often and want more sex because it just brings you so close and you're so appreciative, but you never do it out of duty which mm -hmm. we, we women have a lot of duty sex, a lot of mercy sex, because we never get time to get fully aroused. We never just receive pleasure and arousal. And so, you know, even when a guy, our guy's going down on us or our girlfriend's going down on us, she's, he or she's doing that to get sex, get intercourse. And so once you take that off the table, yeah, that's huge. and you remove that pressure, 
and you start just getting and receiving and he learns how to give without expectation and you learn how to receive without expectation. You learn how to calm the heck down and get into your body Mm -hmm. and receive orgasmic pleasure. Yes, it's amazing. Game changer. That's the game changer. It so is. Yeah, so I owe Dr. Patty such an, I mean, I owe her in a way my career because she taught me the technique and then created an online program that would allow anyone anywhere in the world, any couple to have that experience. And it, the learning to receive and the pleasure without expectation, those are the tenets of that experience Mm -hmm. that sets you free as a couple sexually. I so agree. I love teaching that type of technique because I mean, it is, I love, we do that like three times a week or so. (laughs) So, but it is, it's just that for me, I know like many women, it's that learning to receive is a, is a process and it's just radically transforms things when you can move away from trying to perform or do something you think they want or try to be a porn star, all these things that your mind might think is sexy, but just like being in your body and receiving and really communicating about what feels good and letting yourself just enjoy it with not thinking about anything else, but enjoying. All you need is within you now. You need (laughs) other things. The pleasure is there. Mm -hmm. The orgasms are there waiting for you to let them out. They actually bubble out of you. That's what orgasm does. When you don't have to try to have an orgasm, you have to allow. Yes, that's, yes I love that. So good. Well, we filled up a whole love pod it. with some cool stuff. Yes. <laughs> Is there any last things you'd like to share or to leave the listeners with? And definitely let us know how everyone can sign up for the summit and to learn more. Yep. You just go to moresexualvitality.com and you go to, you can go to the sexual soulmate pact for the soulmate pact. And when you go to moresexualvitality.com, you'll get 30 hot to trot, the 38 fascinating facts to super, supercharge your sex drive that are all the really cool, like it's my executive summary essentially of all the stuff I learned. And the summit is free for a week. The way it works is three to five video interviews release each day for seven days. And they're free that day and then they expire and then more come out and they expire and then more come out and they expire. You can listen to it for free during that week. But then, of course, the way it works is it's free to everyone. And if, you know, a small enough percentage of people actually purchase the videos, they want to have it on their own time, that it's how I can support all the people who helped me co-create it. So you can buy it for 59 bucks. You can buy printed transcripts of it for 29 bucks. That's kind of the business model of it. What I love is that I can give it away for free and still make everybody happy who's participated. And I really just love that model. It's, it's a great model. Yeah. Well, and I'll make sure too to share all the, all the links in the show notes as well as I'll put a link to the episode we did earlier oh, yeah. last year. And that was fun because we did talk all about female G-spot orgasms and all kinds of good stuff. So squirting and all the good stuff. So we will- Yeah, that was our Squirty-licious that was episode. squirty <laughs> So, well, I just so appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for sharing all your wisdom and just for being the beautiful human you are. And yeah, so, and any other, I was going to just ask, lately I've been asking the question of what does find your feminine fire mean to you? And I know you touched on that at the beginning, but I'm curious for you personally how that lands. It is the continual curiosity of my expanding our orgasmic pleasure together is how I find my feminine fire. Not only opening myself to more pleasure, but also part of my feminine fire is lighting my guy up and making him feel adored and sexy and so desired by me. And so I think for me, the fire is that I burn hot enough for us both. Ooh, I love that. And I do love you and Tim are such a beautiful couple. And I just, you are the type of couple too that leaves those you know, sparks behind you as you walk by to inspire everyone else in your path. So thank you. I love you very much. It's so nice to see your beautiful face, Amanda. I'm sorry that podcasts don't let everyone see how pretty you look today. Give your gorgeous man a big kiss and a hug for me and I'll be talking to you soon. I love you very much and thank you so much for having me. Yes, I love you too and have a beautiful day. And for everyone listening, thank you so much for being here. 
Thank you so much for listening to the Find Your Feminine Fire podcast. This is your host, Amanda Testa. And if you have felt a calling while listening to this podcast to take this work to a deeper level, this is your golden invitation. I invite you to reach out. You can contact me at amandatesta.com slash activate. And we can have a heart to heart to discuss more about how this work can transform your life. You can also join us on Facebook and the group Find Your Feminine Fire group. And if you've enjoyed this podcast, please share with your friends. Go to iTunes and give me a five-star rating and a raving review so I can connect with other amazing listeners like yourself. Thank you so much for being a part of the community.